Selsey is a small town on Selsey Bill, which is a headland in West Sussex. Just to the west of the town is a farm and a windmill in an area known as Med Merry. On the 20th of December 1936, approximately 4.10pm, Constable Harry Eady was on patrol at Med Merry Beach. He observed an aircraft approaching low from the southwest. It turned to parallel the beach and touched down in a field just west of the mill. As it touched down, it slewed hard into wind, collapsing the right undercarriage and breaking the propeller. Constable Eady ran to the aircraft, but found the only occupant, a young woman, was unhurt. She was French, but could speak English. Constable Eady asked for her passport. She said, I haven't got one. I wasn't expecting to be in England. Her name was Irene Schmader Chapelet of 10 Rue de Saint-Jean, Paris. The aircraft, a Moraine Saunier 340, was hers and she kept it on the aerodrome at Villa Couble near Versailles. <laughs> Taking off around 1 pm, she climbed to 2,000 metres and then got terribly lost amongst the storms from the southwest. It was only by luck that she found the coastline at Selsey Bill, where she crash landed. Madame Schmeder was very shaken up and cold by the time she landed, and Constable Eady helped her over to Mill Farm. The occupants of Mill Farm, the Wakeley family, welcomed their unexpected guest and looked after her. The next day, Constable Eady inspected the aircraft in daylight. He was intrigued to find a blood-stained flying helmet, a hammer inside a glove, and a live pistol round. Sergeant Bigglesworth. News of Madame Schmeider's arrival in England soon reached Paris. The French authorities wasted no time in issuing an arrest warrant for attempted murder and starting extradition proceedings. Madame Schmeider's flying instructor was Pierre Lallemand. And before long, it wasn't just the Moraine Saunier that Pierre was taking to heaven and back on a regular basis. Pierre was a few years younger than her, but she wanted to divorce her husband and marry Pierre. However, in the meantime, Pierre appears to have found another mistress as well. On that fateful day, Pierre and Madame Schmeider agreed to go for a flight in the same Moraine Saunier, which they actually owned together. The plan was to fly from Villa Couble to Chartres and back. Unbeknown to Pierre, Madame Schmeider was carrying a hammer and a small pistol. No sooner were they airborne when Madame Schmeider started beating Pierre around the head with a hammer. She then drew her pistol and shot him in the neck. In spite of his injuries, Pierre managed to take control of the aircraft and land back on the aerodrome at Villa Couble. Madame Schmeider helped Pierre stagger from the aircraft. Then, before she could be apprehended, she swung the propeller and flew away. On that flight, she considered suicide, but couldn't bring herself to do it, got terribly lost, and only by chance spotted the land at Selsey Bill where she indeed crashed, almost out of fuel. On the 21st of December, police once again interviewed Madame Schmeider at Mill Farm. On the 23rd of December, she was handed over to detectives from Scotland Yard and taken via Chichester to London to await extradition at Holloway Prison. On the 25th of January 1937, she was extradited on the New Haven to Dieppe steamer and handed over to detectives from the Paris Sûreté. The Moraine Saunier was inspected and dismantled by engineers from the Yapton Aero Club at nearby Ford Aerodrome. Prosecutors in Paris wanted the aircraft as evidence, so on the 28th of December it was loaded onto a train at Barnum Junction, and just like its mistress, it was taken back to France on the New Haven to Dieppe steamer. Madame Schmeider continued to be held in custody whilst prosecutors in Paris assembled their case for the attempted murder of Pierre Lallemand.
In a somewhat bizarre reconstruction of the crime, Madame Schmeider and Lallemand sat once again in the fuselage of the Morinsonia, with the very same hammer and pistol, which police had sensibly checked was unloaded. She demonstrated how she had attacked the hapless Pierre. Of course, being a crime of passion, the French press were all over this case when it eventually came to trial in December 1937. In spite of the evidence, everybody stood by or stood up for Madame Schmeider, even her husband and her former lover, Pierre Lallemand. As can be imagined, the press and public galleries were full every day, and theatre was added by Madame Schmeider repeatedly fainting and collapsing during proceedings. The trial lasted three days in total, and much evidence was heard, including from Jack Wakeley and Helen Linkhorn, seen here, who looked after Madame Schmeider at the farm in Selsey. Madame Schmeider managed to convince the court that her actions were not premeditated, that she had originally intended to commit suicide, and only in her fury turned the gun on Pierre Lallemand. On hearing the verdict of not guilty, she fainted. The following year, Madame Schmeider was allowed to return to England to attend the wedding of Jack Wakeley and Helen Linkhorn, the couple who had befriended her and looked after her on arrival at Selsey. True to form, Madame Schmeider allegedly fainted during the wedding ceremony. Nothing more is known about Madame Schmeider or Pierre Lallemand after 1939, but the Moraine Sornia did survive the Second World War and was last seen in 1958 at a flying club in Nice. Thank you for watching.